<laughs> so yeah, so um, so at nineteen sixty nine, uh, you're twenty one, twenty two years old. Um, you and Steve decide that um, you're gonna sort of form sort of the skeleton of of what would become Wishbone Ash. Um, how did how did you and Steve know each other? Steve played in one of the other bands called the Devox, and we liked it. We liked the cut of his jib. He was an unusual drummer, a bit jazzy, yeah, really good. We liked him. And we decided that um, we needed to get him in our band. But it took many, many years before that actually happened. But we did persuade him one night in, in, in a well-known establishment in Exeter called Dirty Dots Cafe, which um, this woman used to keep this place open until two o'clock in the morning to feed starving musicians on the weekends right uh we we were the empty vessels which was our band we were a three-piece band and we were doing great i mean we were well known in the west country we had day jobs and we were playing at the weekends earning good money having a great time and there was absolutely no incentive whatsoever to leave that and come up to london until the 1st of January 1969, when I'd been up all night, because uh, we'd, we'd done a gig down in Cornwall, or Red, Red Ruth, I think it was, and we ended up going back to the DJ's place, getting stoned. I think Roger Taylor was there that night. Um, and I went into work, uh, absolutely exhausted. I, I worked all day, and it was when I'd finished doing all the deliveries that I was on my way back to Timber Yard, um, I've been delivering building materials uh, and I must have passed out on the seat uh, driving this the firm's vehicle and I hit a parked car. There was debris all over the road, buses and vehicles were having to drive on the pavement to get by. Um, I was bleeding profusely, shaking with a crowd of people gathered around me. Uh, I struggled to walk and the cops took one look at me and told the ambulance they could take me to hospital. I said to the the guy who finished stitching me up, I said, well, can I go now? And he said, yeah. He said, you'll have to speak to the police. They'll be in the front outside. So I walked out, looked for these cops, nowhere. So I rushed off to the phone box and phoned up Steve. The first thing he said was, don't tell the cops that you were up all night. I staggered home and went to bed and slept for about 12 hours, I think. The tricky bit was, the really, really tricky bit, was that um, the cops informed me that if the parked car that I hit hadn't been there, I was headed straight for a woman with a small child in a buggy. That did my head in. I realised that the fact that I may have killed someone and had that on the conscience for the rest of my life, you know, uh, it was obvious to me that I had to make a choice between working in the daytime or working at night in a band and i decided on the spot that i had to give it a try for at least a year to come up to london which was the only place to be in this country to try and see if we could get off the ground you know 